OTDR or Optical Time Domain Reflectometry is a testing method to test and certify fiber optic links but with a focus on visualizing the link events. Splices, connections and all types of errors like bends, bad splices, fiber stress etc. can be seen. OTDR is a very powerful tool to locate and identify all kinds of events and their precise locations. First of all, Let's talk about the necessary tools and components needed in order to be able to conduct a proper OTDR test. Firstly, the condition and quality of the reference cords must be verified by inspection. In order to check the connector quality of the test reference cords, a microscope must be used. There are different kinds of microscopes on the market. We at r and strongly recommend the use of video probes. These are 100% safe and can even be used to check the connector quality of active fibers. Make sure that all the required connector tips are available according the connector types being used in the installation. For example, if SC connectors are employed throughout the project, then SC inspection tips are required. For cleaning, the right tools are required as well. There are many different cleaning tools for all manner of connection types like connectors, couplers, active device ports, etc. IBC cleaners should be used for patch panels and active components that are not easily removable or accessible, whereas Cleetop and isopropyl towels should be used for connectors and patch cords, etc. Let's see the OTDR and test equipment. In order to be able to get valid measurements, the test equipment must be calibrated by an officially certified calibration institute according to the equipment manufacturer's guidelines. It must have clean measuring ports. It should have good battery levels or a direct power supply. It must be acclimatized to the environment where it will be used. And when testing, must use clean launch, tail and loop test cords. Also, these test cords must be measured and recorded prior to testing the systems. R&M recommends the same lengths for all test cords being used, ideally about 150 plus meters for multi-mode and 300 plus meters for single mode. What test setups can be made for testing OTDR that fulfill standards requirements? Well, there are two main test setups for fiber optic link certification. Each have their pros and cons. In order to set up the tester and the equipment properly, the test setup must be chosen first. Let's see them. A conventional test setup. Here, one fiber is measured at a time. A launch and tail cord must always be used. Tests with missing launch or tail cords are invalid according our warranty procedure and the standards. The pros of conventional tests are that it is easy to test. Polarity is automatically tested. It is easy to read the trace and even easier to evaluate the tests afterwards. The cons for bidirectional tests are that more time is needed as each fiber is tested separately. Here, the launch and tail cord must stay in place after the end A to end B test. The OTDR must then change location to the far end of the link to do the end B to end A test according the standards. This must be done to enable a proper bidirectional averaging of the A to B and B to A loss values, so a lot more walking is necessary. A loop test setup. With this method, two fibers are measured simultaneously. Launch, loop and tail cords again must always be used. And again, any tests with missing launch or tail cords are invalid according our warranty procedure and the standards. Short loops that are just bridging the ports between two links being tested are not allowed. The pros of loop testing are that testing is much faster as two fiber links are tested with one test run. The OTDR can stay in place because the launch and tail cords are at side A of the installation. On side B, only the loops must be connected. Proper bidirectional tests are easy to fulfill without moving the tester from side A to side B because all test leads just stay in place. The cons are that polarity must be checked separately. It is more difficult to read the traces and it needs more in-depth skills for the proper evaluation afterwards. 
The test equipment set up for loop testing does vary depending on the OTDR manufacturer and your local test equipment dealer or manufacturer must be contacted for more information about setup and evaluation of loop tests. Preparing the test equipment. Prepare the launch, the tail and if the loop testing, the loop reference cords. Inspect the connectors of all cords and if necessary, clean them. Plug the launch cord into the OTDR. Connect the loop if used and tail cord with the launch cord and do a reference measurement. If the insertion loss, or the other name for it, attenuation, and the return loss are OK, save the result of the reference test. Now that the equipment is checked and ready, proceed with the test setup of the OTDR. Preparing the OTDR. Set up the OTDR according the links that should be measured. The most important test settings are to always Test the upper and lower wavelengths, 850 and 1300 nanometers for multi-mode and 1310 and 1550 nanometers and maybe also 1625 nanometers for single mode, if required according to the customer. Enter the length of the test leads. Set the pulse width to 10 nanoseconds. 10 nanoseconds is a very good average value to measure links up to 2 kilometers. Set the measuring range to 5 kilometers. Define the acquisition time. Depending on the OTDR, in general 10 to 20 seconds per link are enough. There is no exact definition, but the time must be set in a way that the traces have long enough time to settle after an event and be clear and clean. Noisy traces should be avoided. Depending on the performance of the OTDR, the acquisition time can vary. Also, set up the most important alarm settings. For the connector losses, they are 0.5 dB for multi-mode and 0.75 dB for single mode. The recommendation for the return losses are minus 35 dB for multi-mode and minus 45 dB for single mode with PC connectors while single mode with APC connectors should reach minus 60 dB. The splice losses are a maximum of 0.3 dB as defined by the standards. RM's recommendation for fusion splices is 0.1 dB. Reminder if the alarms are not set, the OTDR will just test the links without pass fail because no alarm limits were set. Preparing the test procedure. Before plugging the test leads into the panel that should be tested, the connectors should be inspected and cleaned if necessary. Clean test leads should not be getting dirty due to the connectors of the links that are being measured. The proper link identification function of the tester should be used to set up the link ID and the fiber numbers according to the naming convention of the installation. This is crucial for the final evaluation within the OTDR software and even more important for the end customer documentation afterwards. Plug the launch cord into the OTDR and into the port of the link that should be measured on side A. Plug the tail cord into the other end of the link on side B, as shown here on the upper drawing. If testing with loop, the loop cord connects link 1 and link 2 on side B while the launch and tail cords are connected to link 1 and 2 on side A, as shown on the lower drawing. Starting a test. After everything is set up and connected properly, start the test with the OTDR. During the first few seconds of the test, most OTDRs show the connection quality of the measuring port at the OTDR. If the connection quality is bad, the test can be aborted immediately. In this case, clean the port and also the connector of the launch fiber, reconnect and restart the test. As soon as the trace is visible, you can already check if you have the expected link length plus your launch and tail cords. If you're testing with a loop cord, this length is also added to the trace. If, for example, the tail cord is not visible within the trace, the test can be aborted. Investigate what is causing the problem, for example, the polarity or a broken fiber at the end, Fix it and start a new test. After the test is finished, check the values of all events of the tested link. 
For a conventional test there should be two connections and for a loop test there should be four. Make sure the limits for the attenuation loss and the return loss that were previously set have not been surpassed. If the losses are too high, check the connection or the splice at the specific event. Fix the error and retest until the test passes. When the link test has passed, go to side B and measure the same link in the opposite direction. Leave the launch cord connected on side A and move only the tester to side B and connect it to the tail cord for proper bidirectional measuring. In general, splices within panels are very unlikely to be seen on the trace, due to the short distance between the connector and splice. Most likely the OTDR displays a sum event, where the connection and a splice will be shown as one single event. In case of links containing dome closures or similar things, splices will be visible on the trace depending their quality. Proceed testing link by link. Always save the good test results on the OTDR with the right naming identifiers. OTDR event examples. Splices are pure loss events. PC connectors always have reflectance and loss. APC connectors have a very small reflectance and loss. Bends show up usually when the lower wavelength is good but the higher wavelength bad. The end of the fibre link shows a huge loss that is ending in noise. If the whole trace is noisy, the pulse width or the acquisition time is too short. Evaluation process. As there are lots of different OTDR manufacturers, there are also lots of different evaluation software packages. The local test equipment dealer or manufacturer should be contacted for more depth information. In general, the goal of the evaluation is to create a suitable measurement report as the raw OTDR files are not usable for the end customer. Import the test results into the software and do the final evaluation, such as setting the cursors, the zoom factor, etc. Check the events and change identification of the events if the OTDR didn't detect them properly. OTDRs can sometimes fail to identify APC connectors properly. The OTDR sometimes identifies them as a splice because of their very low reflections. Evaluation must be done for each test result. Generate the measuring report and hand it to the customer. For more information, contact your RM partner and or visit our website rdm.com.